Tablets, tablets did not exist, cell phones did. Tablets came out. This is where they're talking about the people over at Comcast and Universal. We've been running around like chickens with our head cut off the last two years trying to secure all digital rights to, to fill out the rest of the platforms. Mm -hmm. And how they're talking about if they can't get a person to sign the digital rights on, I mean, they're flat out. If a TV series cannot get the person to sign off on them, they cut them out. They just flat cut them out. Well, if, if you think portion. about it too, because you, you're like, how difficult can it be? Well, let's see. Part of it is some of the people are no longer alive. Yeah. And so they have to track down their family members. I know. And it's, I don't think you can just track down one family member to get the permission, no, right? Because they even um, can protest. You have to find out. Um, it's just like there was a reason why the road pictures with Bing Crosby and Bob Hope were not shown for a, a, a lot of years was because uh, people they didn't have television rights from a lot of the people that performed in the thing and the people that wrote music. I mean, they had to track down surviving members of families to get them signed off. And then some of the, some of the wills were, I left it to my family. Mm -hmm. Which members of the family did they mean? Uh, like Benny Hill. Benny Hill died and left all rights, all, you know, because he did, he knew about the digital stuff. He left everything to his mother who died the day after he did. And his mother left everything to him. So what happened? Uh, it got off a court battle for a long time, which is why you... Because uh, it goes to him and then it goes to her and it's... No, that's why you saw a lot of what Benny Hill didn't own. You know, what he was doing, what he was, uh, for, he was like a hired gun for uh, the BBC for years until he moved to Thames. So the BBC, here's a good one, the BBC used to do this with this because they just liked Benny Hill so much. They would go, they shoot them with slingshots and stuff and bust the kinescopes. So there's a lot of early Benny Hill doesn't exist. But um, digital rights, so it's a big deal. But um, now the latest battleground is apps. Two years ago it was 3D. Today it is apps. We are not going to produce an app for your set unless we know that you're going to produce the sets to put the apps on so we can put our content on because the content has to be um, basically it has to be um, uh, amorphosized. It's got to be created for that app to be looked at. You know, they want to optimize, optimize for that screen. Yeah. So he, here's the challenge because we were talking about apps yeah. when, w the other day because we were sitting there talking. You know, you ever notice that when you're looking at that consumer electronics industry, there's a lot of options for iPhone an iPad and a lot of people think and we and we've been in circles where they thought and they didn't realize an iPad was a tablet. Yeah. And they also thought iPad was on Android, right? Yeah. Which an iPad is on the Apple operating system. An iPad is a tablet, but there's other tablets. So yeah. there's iPad apps. Yeah. There's Android apps. There's well, what, what's Blackberry called it in theirs? Um, and HP oh, had one? Yeah. It, it, RAM, whatever. Uh, uh, RAM systems, yeah. Yeah. And then Microsoft has them. And so, for yeah. example, like the equipment, as far as um, the BlackBerry, their their tablets have not sold as well because they're on a different operating system. And there's not that many apps available. And Even though there's quite a few people that own Blackberries, they thought and they it's, would sell. it's what damaged the HP because the HP had a system. HP used the Palm system, mm -hmm. which is why the Palm. Uh, you know, uh, their, their, their uh, tablet didn't work, but they gave the palm. They actually became the largest manufacturer of tablets in the world when they dumped Literally them. Literally overnight. Things. But that was after two, two reasons. One is they dumped them and so people didn't care so much about the number of apps. But someone also said that they had an app that could turn the HP Which they didn't in, know. Into what happened was they, right after there was no more available, they all of a sudden put out, oh, well, we've got an app for like 20 bucks that anybody mm -hmm. can turn their thing into a a full-blown regular thing, oh God. But, uh, but um, it's just, 3D was killed because there was like 14 different forms of 3D that can be shown. And what happened was, was the manufacturers decided to do, uh, as I said, it was, um, the, their decision was to make money, not to create a set to sell, so they did the active shutter glasses. Active shutter glasses meant that they could only work with the set that you were viewing on. They couldn't do a thing. We've got this, for instance, this camera can only be fed into a, um, um, a Panasonic uh, Viera, Viera, or Viera, whatever. Viera. Viera. It cannot be seen as is. No monitor. It will not function on any other monitor but that system.
Yeah, and the ch this challenge for standards is not new. It happens in industry after industry with major development. I mean, a lot of you might be familiar with the, the, the VHS beta war, then there's the Blu-ray HD war. Yeah. And part of it is whoever whoever creates the standards, and here's the challenges. By the time everybody agrees on a the standard, there's usually something out there that's better that people want to race towards. Yeah, and then, it, and then here's the thing too, is what they also don't understand is that we were over in the automotive, the greening, the brand thing over there, and they're talking about, you know, that we need standards, you know, that we, you know, because on automotive because you, they're creating apps for automotive now too. Oh yeah, that was another part. And there is no standard, but uh, but they have designed a system so that if you, you know, uh, you put it, they have only an app for their system, and it's a closed shop, folks. Which means you can't use the uh, codex, so you can sit there and create an app for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but and. And so what happens is that the aftermarket, okay, they got the aftermarket people, aftermarket people like are salivating because they know, oh hell, when it's off of Marty, we'll just give you an app that basically you can get into the system with and run your stuff all off this app. Oh, because the, they were sitting there saying, you know, who needs a $2,000 navigation system when you can just get an app for your cell phone for $50, it'll do the same thing. Yeah, and then you can, when you basically hack the system, which is what one of the guys behind me said, let just hack the system, it's off of You can basically use that cell phone app on your screen, on your car, you know, you basically, it's called, that is where connectivity does come in. You basically mm -hmm. connect your devices up with other things, but it only, you can only connect that basically has sort of like, you know, a means for you talking to one to another. Bluetooth is basically the, the monkey on everybody's back because it does allow you to connect to a lot of things you shouldn't be able to connect to. A lot of things they don't want you to connect to, if it had Bluetooth capabilities, you can basically get into the system off of a Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So it sometimes, uh, if you know what you're doing, I, I have a tendency to know what I'm doing sometimes. But um, I mean, there's so much. Um, the app people, there is no. What they were all complaining about is that we must have a standardization of apps, and you're not going to give it to us. Yeah. Because they all have their own five tums. All the well, and what, and part of the reason for the five tums, you know, when you look at the other wars, is Whoever helps standardize, right? They they follow their standard. Um, well, the gatekeeper is the one that makes the money. Yeah. So it's all about the money. Yeah, the challenge is on the content side. If you have to prepare your stuff and it's better utilized on this and optimized for that, you're preparing the content for that. Yes, there will always be aggregators which can change it, but just like we're looking at the conversion. Um, from 2D into a 3D print. Yeah. Okay, they were talking about Titanic, which was, how long was that movie? Like three hours? Yeah. Okay. But it, and it cost them $18 million. And then they've talked about the conversion rates to 2D from um, 3D and how the, what was it, like $125,000 for 60 seconds? Yeah. For commercial? Now it's about half of that. Yeah. But in one year. But they're also talking about the fact that they're, they're ignoring the fact that when you're converting, you know, that 18 million conversion includes making a god awful new pristine print with pristine sound, pristine everything. Mm -hmm. It's actually no more expensive than what and it creating was. creating a print anyway. And creating a print anyway because you're going to, you're basically, you're going to have to micromanage everything with a computer today. So it's a, it's actually a really a cheap deal to bring in maybe another billion dollars. But, um, but for example, but, that, that app standard is creating confusion because, for example, like the set top box manufacturers, just like you, the consumer goes in to buy a 3D TV. We're going to give you that as an example. And you've got a Sony option, you've got an LG option, and a Samsung option. This the Vizio now. Vizio. The glasses are tuned, active shutter, just for that television set. Unless you have a universal one like Monster has. And so you're sitting there going, Yeah, but if I buy Sony here, I have let's say Pioneer over here, I have Samsung here, and they're may or may not. Yeah. And none okay, the, like the, the big the 800 pound grill in the room is a little cheap visual because they use passive glasses. Mm -hmm. But uh, but what will be, okay, here, what you can see on the active shutter will not work on the passive glasses. Mm -hmm. What you can do in a passive will not work on active. And they said, that, you've got to come to a standard on the glasses. And so what it does is from a consumer side, you're thinking, well, unless they know I'm kind of locked into it, and price of technology is going to change anyway, so why should I spend the money? Yeah. Which creates, on the CE side, they're going, well, why aren't our sets selling? Yeah, There's always early adopters, yes, 
but why aren't we selling more? Yeah. It's because there's confusion and everybody's waiting. Got a little confusion because um, here's another thing is that TV, the people on television sets are really getting tired of the clutter that they're having to add to them. It's just, I'm, I'm from an era when basically you wanted to see more programming in Los Angeles area. You had to go buy a UHF converter really? in order to be able to see the UHF station. So that's another, that's a thing on top by your antenna. And, um, and then, you know, if you wanted to get a better signal, you had to put a antenna, antenna with an antenna rotor on it, which means you turn it to the signals. That's another item. So uh, now we've replaced the antenna rotor with a, a set-top box for cable with a DVR player in it. And uh, and and the uh, uh, and your modem over there besides you just you're cluttering up the top of your set you know but it, or, or next to it I mean I've got so many things coming off of my set it's unreal but um, they they they've got a device that will allow you I think you pick it up we've seen it in Best Buy under counters you know the, where it will allow you to turn any it will, it will undo the active part on TV sets and make them passive sets but then again. Why pay the extra money for that when you just go back past the set if you wanted one? But, uh, but just, like I said, it's their battle. See, see the confusion that's created from yeah. the consumer which, side? Which, if you're, if, you're a process, if you're a content maker, which one of the, I have to create 3D across every platform. And it's not Well, and it. we're just talking about 3D. Yeah. The same thing applies to other devices. Oh, well, it has to be high def at a certain size. I can guarantee you, okay, we're turning out demonstration equipment. An Android, an Android and an Apple definition is not the same on a, on a tablet as it is on your cell phone. So you have to change out the size of the thing for a high def one. Well, we're fortunate because we can go ahead and change it because yeah. people say, well, what, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, can you give me a copy of that video? Yeah. And I'll say, well, how are you going to use it? And the same thing applies because we work with this. For example, the 3D, yeah. right? And there's all different. Well, maybe we, should you pick on 3D? Um, um, there's all different types there's of 3D. There's 14 different types of 3D I can make. I, I basically I can do uh, I can do uh, I can do interlaced in three different forms, and it can change up, down, right, left, sideways, different. You know, interlaced that way. Uh, it basically, you can do it in like 14 different forms on my software, and which form is being used by which set. Well, and I think a lot of it all has to do with experience, because that's one of the things that they're telling people, because, for example, when you go in through the apps, the apps are supposedly optimized. So if you don't have a great app experience yeah. through that portal, you know, the way that you got into it, um, you may not return to that site or go back to it. You know, and that's all, you know, so there's your problem, and that, that nobody knows how to give the great experience. That is the next problem, folks, that nobody knows how, um, because it, it, we're going to get into a lot of this stuff, but um, that, you know, we have no standardization, and when you have standardization, it leads to unstandardization again. Mm -hmm. You don't have standardization, by the time you get done standardizing stuff, so they start producing something for the new standards, Somebody comes along with a better mousetrap and he's got you. See, I think that's part of the... Remember this challenge a few years ago? They were talking about being able to receive your content anytime, anyplace, anywhere. So then they came up with digital copy, so you can get the same copy. You can put it on your computer. You can put it on your television and watch it on the DVR. Now, getting it on any place, anytime, anywhere means being able to get it on your television set, your PC, your laptop, your tablet, your cell phone, yeah. and all the different types of manufacturers, yeah. right? And so now they think they're going to solve it by doing iCloud and ultraviolet. No, but the problem is, is there are no devices capable of doing ultraviolet yet, which is ridiculous. They're there to they're doing it. Actually, the demos didn't go quite as well as they figured because nobody showed up. You know, only one manufacturer showed up and he didn't have any product. At iCloud, we can guarantee you that we know somebody that has been at war with Apple for like a week now over iCloud because she, she put all her stuff there and she can't get it back. Oh, yeah, that's kind of a problem. Because, it, it, okay, the cloud is nothing more than, a, 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 it's basically a computer server. A server is just something that's basically all memory that you put stuff on. And that's all it is. If the, uh, if, if it all has to do with the same thing before, I mean, why do you want to put something over here? Okay, here we got two glasses, give an example. They are here right now. What you're going to do, we're going to take this glass and move it over here. 
and then we're going to ask to pick up the information from over here when all you have to do is to have it here to begin with. I mean, you're taking it from, you're going to, well, I don't have to store it on my hard drives. Well, yes, you do. How are you going to get it from, okay, this is your hard drive, this is the cloud. You know how you get it from here to here? It's got to be on here. So when you go like this, well, that's guess assumption. where the information is still at? Well, that's assumption that the cloud is bigger than your hard drive. Ah, no. But hard drives have to be bigger because unless you put, unless you do not download it. Okay, here's the trick is, how many people, this is your personal stuff. This is the stuff that you, you know, your personal stuff. We're now going to... Take all your personal stuff, move it over here, and, um, you know, like, hey, look, it, it's totally empty now except for that. It's empty. Um, so, I want to go home. Okay, here's the thing. Cloud's not working. Cloud not work because cloud down like it is at the moment. Cloud not work, so I go to home. I want to see the new version of Pirates of the Caribbean that just came out that I downloaded or uploaded over to the cloud is, okay, I go back, uh, 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 well, yeah. where's my, I don't have one here. Oh, that's right. I put it on somebody else's server. So I can't see what I wanted to see because this is empty now. Well, you know, the same thing I've been experiencing because I might have a data slowdown, which yeah. supposedly they don't have, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. everybody has unlimited data, aha, uh -huh, right? Yeah. Um, and I've been going through battles with my cable oh, provider. Yeah, I mean, I, but she's busy taking notes because we, we, we have to be two. We have to do two things at the same time, which is two people. I caught what they said on the giga, on the Google Gigabyte. The uh, you know our provider is working on the megabyte standard, folks, mm -hmm. and their their basic rate is ten megabytes. Mm -hmm. um, we eat through 10 megabytes in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. So, and she wonders why there's a slowdown because she basically. And, so, and people, 